What's going on everybody? It's your boy C4 here and today trying to sprinkle some good vibes out there to all you Philadelphia Eagles fans. Uh, I'm recording this before the first official uh, preseason game against the Tampa Buccaneers. It'll probably come out after that so I, I might might have changed my tune a little bit but this is with the impending 10 game suspension for Lane Johnson and all the doom and gloom across Facebook, Twitter, vlogs, blogs, YouTube, message sports, all that stuff, that this is going to be a rough year for little Philadelphia Eagles. And, you know, I honestly probably agree with that. I'm not – I go to try to go to an Eagles game every year. I'm not going to really put that in the old C4 budget this coming season just because it's it's so – it's underwhelming season. But that doesn't mean there could be, you know, some surprises along the way. So I was going to make a video saying why the Philadelphia Eagles can win the NFC East. But overall, man, there's just more I need to try to cheer uh, everyone up with. And I got seven things, so here we go. We'll jump right in with number one. The NFC East isn't that great overall. It's still going to be one of the weakest divisions in the NFL. I'd say even in the NFC, I'd say probably, you know, it's ties have turned. You can only be good for so long until, you know, not having high draft picks catches up to you. I mean, the NFC East and the NFC West forever was the top two divisions in the NFC. And then slowly you had, you know, Aaron Rodgers came to the Green Bay Packers. They started to get good. I mean, and looking at this year, uh, Outside of the Arizona Cardinals, the NFC East and the NFC West are probably two of the worst divisions in football. Um, but still, it's anyone's division here in the NFC East because, in comparison, look at the New York Giants. Their run game is, sus is suspect, and they have a lot of free agents coming in. So the team chemistry might not be there. And, you know, they have some stigma of the old Philadelphia Eagles dream team. Too many big names coming in. You got Janoris Jenkins. You got Snacks. You got uh, Olivier Vernon. You still have some question marks at the linebacker spot. So, I mean, you know, that defense still coming off a year where they had one of the worst defensive seasons in NFL history. There's still some question marks there. So, I mean, the Giants are definitely not a foregone conclusion. You have the Washington Redskins, who I could just summarize as average, which is good. Don't get me wrong. I'm the one that said the Washington Redskins will probably win the NFC East this year. They're just, they're solid. They're not great at anything. Uh, their, their defense is average. Their offense can be average. I think, um... If you told me to put money on what team I think will ultimately win the NFC East, I would probably put it on Washington right now. But they're average. Like I said, you can beat an average team on any given day. And then the Dallas Cowboys, you got Tony Romo's health, and I think they have a very bad defense, man. They have a lot of suspensions, injuries. You know, you got fucking Rolando McClain coming in overweight, addicted to perp. You got Randy Gregory, who just, like I said, big surprise there, huh? Who would have thought that guy would have turned his life around? Not this motherfucker. So, I mean, overall, man, the NFC is not great. So, there's a chance that we could somehow win this division. Uh, number two is our front seven win healthy, if they stay healthy, is and can be a top five in the NFL and keep us in games. I mean, you got Benny Logan and Fletcher Cox at defensive tackle. You got Brandon Graham, Vinny Curry, and Connor Barwin at defensive end. That is as much depth along the defensive line as maybe any team in the NFL. Very very similar to what the Seattle Seahawks have. Uh, linebackers went healthy. You got Bradham, who's, you know, he's, he's all right. But then you got Jordan Hicks, who looked phenomenal, almost a potential Rookie of the Year candidate. And Michael Kendricks, if he can bounce back to form, man, he is a very good linebacker. And then at safety, you have Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod. That might be the second best safety tandem in the NFC beside, behind uh, Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas. Corners, I don't really know about our corners, but like I said, this is about the front seven mostly, man. That front seven with healthy can absolutely be, a, you know, keep us in games. We have no chance and no reasonable shot of winning, but that defense can keep us in. Uh, number three is, like I just was kind of touching on, Mal uh, Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod could be good enough to make our cornerbacks serviceable. I think you can help them a lot. You can have some, they've already been saying there's some nickel packages and stuff where they have Malcolm Jenkins coming in playing a little bit of corner. Same with Rodney McLeod. Both those guys are converted corners, so their coverage ability should be able to help our under Underwhelming, at least on paper, our underwhelming cornerbacks this season. Uh, number four is Zach Ertz and Jordan Matthews are certainly trending up. They're still young. They're still very productive thus far in their careers. Maybe not have lived up to the highest expectations of us. But, I mean, you know, all reports from campus, Jordan Matthews has kind of, you know, broken away from those brick hands they had a season ago. And now it's, what, it's just another year where Zach Ertz, is he going to be, you know, the next best top five tight end in the NFL or not? But I'd say overall, both those guys are certainly trending up. And they could, you know, on an offense right now that doesn't look like they have any superstars, those two guys can certainly make the jump and uh, get into that category. Uh, number five is underrated players uh, that can make an impact. 
Um, especially on offense. For me, I'm looking at Kenyon Barner, uh, Trey Burton at tight end, and Ruben Randall at wide receiver. These guys here, they could. I see something like the 2015 Jags. I mean, the Jags going in last year, Alan Hearns, who's that? Uh, Alan Robinson, who's that? Uh, you had like Rashad Green. You had other guys like that that you know didn't make a lot of plays, weren't known for making a lot of plays. So why can't we have that this year? That's highly optimistic, and they probably won't uh, really touch the success levels they had. But, I mean, it's just another no-name offense with guys that, you know, can have big years. Ruben Randall has been supposedly been catching everything uh, during training camp. Trey Burton, as well, has been showing great glimpses of uh, maybe even bumping out Brent Selleck for some tight end snaps. And Kenyon Burner, man, he was a preseason stud last year. What happens if he gets full-time touches now in this backfield, especially with Ryan Matthews' inability to stay healthy? And Wendell Smallwood's missing a lot of time this preseason. So it's Kenyon Burner's spot to lose right now, I think. Um, so like I said, you know, there's underrated players that could certainly make a jump and, uh, you know, spring off the board on offense on paper right now that doesn't really seem to have lots of playmakers. Number six is Doug Peterson brings smash mouth football on offense back to emphasize our running back death. We have a lot of running backs, even though they're not the most healthy. Ryan Matthews, Darren Sproles, then you got Wendell Smallwood, who people are pretty high about, and then you got Kenyon Byrne. Those are four guys. If you really want, just run them in the fucking ground. Our wide receivers might not be good enough. Aguilar might not be good enough. Josh Huff's not good enough. I can tell you that right now. Just bring back smash mouth football. Uh, minimize that will minimize our lack of elite playmakers on, especially on the outside. Um, in combination with our defense, just grind games out. Turn into, you know, the Baltimore Ravens that won the Super Bowl a couple years ago. They weren't flashy. They won the Super Bowl. Uh, even the Denver Broncos last year, they weren't flashy. They were horrible on offense. They still won the Super Bowl. Uh, tight end is also a strength, and that's something you can do in Smash Mouth Football. Have a lot of three tight end sets that rumored to be going on. I mean, they're not the biggest blockers of tight ends, but, I mean, that is a lot of big bodies. Just oh, muscle the other opposing defenses. And finally, number seven, is within the division, Eagles have the worst offense, but I personally think they have the top defense and top special teams. So two out of three is not that bad. They might, I, they, I think convincingly they do have the worst offense in the NFC East right now on paper. But, I mean, I don't, I, special teams for sure. Dave Fipp might be the best special teams coach in the NFL. And, you know, when you got Darren Sproles, you got Kenyon Barner, you got guys, even our sp regular special teamers, man, our special teams has won us probably more games than any other team's special teams in the last three, four seasons. So that, most of that stayed intact. And then I think our defense, I don't think I can say convincingly another team in the NFC East has a better defense than the Philadelphia Eagles. So those are seven things, guys, that we can hold our hat on this coming year and be somewhat optimistic. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not certainly as exciting as years past. It's gonna. It's a new era. It's a new era in Philadelphia. I don't know how long the Doug Peterson era is going to last, but it is a new era. It is here. It is the current in trend right now. And, you know, what fun is it going into the season? You know, ah, who gives a fuck, man? We're probably going to lose. Let's, let's look at the positives and hope for a good season. I mean, I'm the I'm the biggest grumpy cat of them all for the Philadelphia Eagles. And even then, I can still see there are some chances and some glimpses of what could be a surprising season for the Philadelphia Eagles. So that does it for me here today, guys. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. There's going to be so much Eagles, so much Bad 17 coming soon. So you're not going to want to miss that. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out.